Ron Esmond here for Winners and Winners, trying to make you a better better. And uh, got another parlay bet for you this week, man. One leg of my parlay got blown out early last week, and it really hurt. But I don't, I don't see it happening this week. Some interesting st stats for you. Number one seeds make it to the Super Bowl 54% of the time. Now, you're saying, no, it's 50-50. Yeah, but if you look at the chances of the other seeds making it, you're, you're breaking up that 46% over four more teams. So, yeah, it's actually infinitesimal once you start moving down the line. Uh, since the NFL expanded to a 12-team playoff, uh, this started in the 1990 season. Teams coming off a first round by 64, 55, and 3 against the spread, a little over 50%, 91 and 31 straight up, 75%. Now, since 2015, those numbers have jumped to 13, 8, and 1 against the spread, 61%, 18 and 4 straight up, 82%, and 7 and 4 against the spread, and 10 and 2 straight up for the number one seeds. So the number one seed has a has a has a big advantage. That is because they have an extra week's rest and they're at home. Well, the 49ers and Ravens are not coming off one week of rest, but two. Both of them could not improve their position by winning. So they both sat all their significant players in the final week of the regular season. Two weeks of rest. Meanwhile, the teams are going to play have had no rest at all. And both these games are on Saturday, which, uh, you know, it's a significant challenge, shortens the week. Tampa Bay, then, you look at them, they backed into the playoffs. They had two chances to solidify winning the division, and they shot themselves in both games. They barely beat the Carolina Panthers. If it wasn't for DJ Chark reaching out and fumbling the ball through the end zone, if he scores that touchdown, the Panthers win that game. So I got no confidence in the Buccaneers going up against the Lions. Um, the Lions defense is vulnerable to the to the long pass. And, you know, if Baker Mayfield gets hot, anything's possible, right? But I just don't think it's likely. I, I Although I don't trust the Lions defense that much. Now, the Chiefs beat a terrible Dolphins team that had like half their players out injured. The Bills have just looked great uh, lately. Uh, the Bills are at home this time as opposed to playing in Arrowhead. And they're peaking at the right time. Josh Allen's going nuclear. Man, that touchdown run of his was fun to watch last week. They're going to be too much for the Chiefs. And so the way I see this falling is the Bills beat the Chiefs, and that is statistically the closest game according to the bookmakers. So let's give that one to the bill. Then the Lions and the Buccaneers, I just don't like the Buccaneers. The Lions, I think their biggest test was against the Rams until they faced the 49ers, who they're going to face. If they win this game, they'll have to go to, San, to uh, sorry, uh, Santa Clara, not San Francisco anymore. And then are the Ravens going to lose the Texans? No freaking way. Are the 49ers going to lose? No freaking way. So here's my parlay bet for you. Four teams, money line. 49ers win, Ravens win, Lions win, Bills win. Put up 100 bucks, 340 is your total win. I, I, I think this is taking candy from a baby. Um, I don't like some of these point spreads. Nine and a half is a lot. Six and a half is a lot for the Lions. The Bills and the Chiefs have played so many close games. I don't like any points in that one either. But if you say, I can triple my money if I take the 49ers, Ravens, Lions, and Bills, yeah, if one of those games goes sideways, but you got to believe the Buccaneers beat the Lions, I have trouble with that. You got to believe a terrible Chiefs squad that has been winning on their defense goes in and wins at Bills Mafia home. I doubt it. And I just can't, I cannot see. The Ravens are the 49ers losing. So there's your 14 parlay money line bet. 100 bucks, total win 340. I'm Loud Esmond for Winners and Winners, trying to make you a better, better.